Hi guys, it's Loretta with Sparrowhawker Designs. Welcome back to my channel. So this is a slow stitch piece that I am working on. This is all my designs. Um, and I thought I would just bring you along today. I'm, I'm, I'm trying out this new camera angle here. And if it works, this is, this is the angle I'm gonna use for the crazy quilt videos that I wanted to do. So I thought I would um, try this out on one of my slow stitch pieces. So, yeah, this is, um, I don't know, I kinda like that there. This is, uh, all of this on here, this is my design, so is this. Um, and I made, you know, made the hexes and um, all that kind of stuff. Same thing here with the rabbit. Um, so, I'm thinking about put that right there I think I'm thinking about uh, putting this together in a kit um, having a I don't know that I would be able to get all the embellishments in a kit but I should be able to do at least like all the pieces of fabric and give you the embroidery designs in in the kit uh, but so far as like threads and the embellishments, I, I can probably do some of the embellishments, but not all of them. Uh, you probably have to add yourself. So uh, tell me what you tell me if you would be interested <laughs> in that. So I've been <laughs> I've been kind of thinking about doing some English paper piecing. I mean that is what I do for the hexes is the English paper piecing. Uh, but beyond that, I mean, I've never made anything bigger than this. <laughs> so I have um, been batting around that idea. And uh, so I've been watching a lot of Tula Pink videos because she does primarily hand, pa hand English paper piecing. Um, so anyway, she's... She's quite funny, and I really, really like her. Um, I, I'm not like a super fan of the fabrics because I don't really like bright fabrics. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm in the minority, and I know it's sacrilegious, but um, yeah, I kind of prefer pastels or really warm colors to super bright colors, but um, she is just such a doll, and she's so... Um, like her instructions are just great. I know I tied a knot in that. It came right through. Her instructions are just so good. I mean, you can follow along completely. There's no, you know, second guessing anything when she shows you how to do something. It's like she almost, almost over describes everything, but that's good because I need that. <laughs> Okay, for some reason, my knot just keeps pulling right on through. Anyway, um, yeah, no, she's a doll, and she's so talented. And I, but like listening to her um, talk about how she gets like her designs from like her head <laughs> to the quilt store, like it goes from her brain to the quilt store, that whole process is just absolutely fascinating and I just yeah I always thought I would love to design fabric but after watching that I'm kind of like I I can't draw, <laughs> I mean I can obviously but I can't draw like that, that's like her stuff is just really amazing um Anyway, but she's from Kansas City, Missouri, and I am from St. Louis, Missouri, and I just thought that was really kind of neat how she, uh, her, and then Angela Walters, too, is from uh, somewhere in Kansas, and then you've got the Missouri Quilt Company, is that the Missouri Star Quilt Company, is that what that's called, uh, Jenny Doan, I can't remember, um, so... We got quite a resurgence of quilt happenings in Missouri right now, which I think is like really cool. So Jenny Doan basically took a one horse, one stoplight town 
and turned the entire town into like this quilt kingdom. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. Um, a quilt kingdom. Now, ordinarily, I would be, I would have this like rolled up to be, you know, but because I'm on camera, I'm trying to keep it all out. And the thing that I've also noticed, like with this, so I, I cut my batting for this all one and then put the blocks on there. I think if I was going to do it again, uh, I, I would do it in blocks and just sew the blocks together. Um, the reason I didn't do it that way this time is because that's kind of how I've been doing it, doing it in blocks. And I wanted to try something different. I wanted to try like a whole, um, just like a whole thing and just put everything on there but you can see I'm having to keep the whole bottom half of this uh, slow stitch piece kind of all rolled up because otherwise it was <laughs> it was becoming quite the mess and uh, was going all over the place um, but anyway back to the the Kansas City thing the Kansas City I, I was I don't know how many of you are familiar with like the Kansas City Star newspaper and how they used to publish, um, I cannot see what I'm doing, and how they used to publish quilt patterns. Um, I don't know if they did it like every week, every month or what it was, but they did it from like 1928 to uh, 1961. and. So, it, I mean, and it has spawned, like, over a hundred books, you know, pu being published by, like, C&T Publishing and stuff like that. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm just randomly tacking this down. <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason to it. Okay, glasses didn't help. I think the problem is, is that it's super hot here today. Even with the air conditioning on, I am burning up. I mean, I'm sweating. It's so uncomfortable to try to stitch and sweat at the same time. Of course, if you're in my world, it's uncomfortable to do anything and sweat at the same time. I would prefer to never sweat in my entire life. I hate sweating. But anyway, <laughs> that's beside the point. Um, so yeah, so the Kansas City Star started publishing um, patterns in 1928. And the very first pattern that they published was called, what was that called? Uh, oh, it was Pine Tree, which, you know, you would think, it would look like a pine tree but it it doesn't look like a tree at all um in fact it kind of looks like kind of looks like a pinwheel in a way but anyway so they uh that was the first one they published and i think the last one was a fan um but anyway it started out with i don't know how many of you are familiar with ruby short mckim but if you're into quilt history at all you've probably heard of her and she published like one of the books back in the I think back in the oh boy I don't know what year that was but I want to say it was in the 30s on um, the history of the American quilt and <laughs> which is really funny because I don't know I just think that's funny like in the 30s they're writing a history of the American quilt and now there's like so much more history that's happened since then but anyway that's beside the point um, so I think she was one of the first uh, people in charge of that, like in charge of putting the patterns in the Kansas City Star. And, uh, and then I can't remember who the second lady was. And then the third lady was, uh, what was her name? Last name was Dunn, D-U-N-N. And she was the one that started reaching out to, to readers. And if you sent in a quilt pattern and they published it, the Kansas City Star published it in the women's section of the newspaper, um, you got $1.50, <laughs> which, which, you know, was kind of cool. What I think is really cool about that is that you could also see then people sending in their patterns from different regions of America and what they called those patterns, you know. And... Um, um, anyway, so I just, I just thought that was like really interesting. And then there was like Rose Kretzinger was also, she's an award-winning quilter from the twenties and thirties. She also lived in the Kansas area. 
Um, and I think she was from Emporia, I think. And so I just thought that was kind of neat that how Kansas has this really rich quilt, quilt history and how you have these two really young people like Angela Walters and um, Tula Pink come along and kind of continue that tradition of putting a completely different spin on it um, and a completely different, um, I don't know, just a different take on it and yeah, I mean, it's just really, really cool. I love that both of them also are really young because um, I am no longer considered a young quilter. <laughs> but uh, back when I started quilting, I was like 26, and I was like the only per I mean, I was like that nerdy person at the party, you know, who couldn't wait to get home to start quilting. And I'd be like, you know, come on, honey, can we go? Can we go? Because I wanted to go home and quilt, and, you know, everybody else <laughs> was like... You're so weird. But anyway, and um, and I remember trying to find uh, like a quilt community, like a community of some sort of people to quilt with. And I did, but they, you know, they all could have been my mother or my grandmother, which was fine. I mean, I, you know, I made some really cool friendships there. And um, But yeah, there was definitely not... Uh, the there was it, it definitely was not quilting was not something that young people were, were really into and so I think that that's just awesome that Tula Pink and Angela Walters both are young and they're bringing young quilters they're bringing because there's a lot of young people that uh I was not one of them. I have always liked the antique fabrics. I've always liked the pastels and the really warm colors and anything that looks old. But a lot of young people don't. And uh, so, uh, you know, I just think that that's really neat that they have sort of brought that crowd on board because I don't care what it is, you got to have fresh blood every now and then to to you know to to whatever it is to keep it going and keep it um keep the tradition alive you know so anyway that's kind of my rant I'm sitting here trying to figure out um what it is I'm going to talk about whenever I do my crazy quilting <laughs> on camera and so yeah, that's me. I'm sitting here going, what are you going to talk about? Well, you know a lot about quilts, so maybe you could just talk about the history of quilts while you're crazy quilting. And I don't know, you guys can turn the volume down if you don't want to hear me, I guess. <laughs> ah. But anyway, this thread is the exact same color as this batting, so I'm using my needle to try to tie that knot because I can't see what I'm doing. But anyway, so uh, this is obviously not, I'm not, even though, even though I'm like moved down to like this part, I'm still not done. I have, uh, I think I'm going to do some stitching in here and I'm going to add some stuff in here and I'm going to do some stuff here and I need to finish, I'm going to fill in the rabbit a little bit more, but But I, I love houses, and so there are two other houses on this quilt that I also drew. Um, I don't know, I might even do a little applique house. I don't know, I haven't decided. And this is a pinwheel that I pieced together that I, I have another one. I have one down over on this part. Um, there's only one embroidery design on here so far that is not entirely mine, and that's this one right here. And it is um, Kathy Schmidt's. It's like two or three of hers that I kind of combine together, <laughs> but that one's not mine. Um, I still have basting stitches in here, so, you know, it, it looks weird. I know it looks weird. Anyway. So, yeah, so, and I'm going to probably finish tacking that down. I just kind of like that the rabbit's kind of peeking out from under there, but anyway. Okay, guys. I don't know if what you can see and what you can't see. Um... I, the English paper piecing for me is kind of weird. I, I mean, I uh, let me see if I can find some of my pieces. 
um, you know, you, you, you glue them, you used to baste them, do these basting stitches around the paper and then, you know, but that's just like a whole extra step that you really don't have to do. Uh, so you can sort of um, glue them and then you uh, stitch them together. You know, you do like a little whip stitch and you stitch them together and then they come out, you know, like that. And then you tear the paper out, except for I can't ever get the paper to come out without completely destroying the fabric around it. Like it's all frayed and frazzled and um, and I figured out that I think I, my glue is too good is what I think the problem is. I was using, uh, what was I using? I can't remember. Um, but I think my glue is too good a glue and I was having so much trouble. So uh, I had called up a couple of the quilt shops and asked them if they had bad fabric glue and they just thought that was so funny they laughed and laughed I'm like no you don't understand I the glue is too good I can't get my paper piecing to come out and they just they thought that was so funny so I have the um I do use this I, this is not what I was using on this project originally I did use this on these and I think it might might come out a little bit easier I don't know but um, I they, I finally figured out what Tula uses, and I have ordered that. I should get that tomorrow, and we'll see if that helps. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the glue is too good a glue. So, all right, guys, I will talk to you later. Can't decide what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do something. Anyway, all right, I hope you guys have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.